This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. The Landsat 8 scene downloaded in the previous chapter provided 11 different images, each with a different band designation and each covering a specific region of the electromagnetic spectrum. In this chapter, we'll add the 11 individual bands, or TIFF files, into ArcGIS Pro and examine the properties of each of those files. Open ArcGIS Pro and select Map from the blank templates area. Now let's add the 11 bands from the Landsat image we downloaded in Chapter 12. Click Map, Add Data, Navigate to your Landsat TIFF files, Select and add all 11 TIFF files. These are the 11 images associated with the scene, one image per band. They're stacked on top of one another as you can see here in the contents pane. Let's review band symbology. Notice that the band is displayed in grayscale. The digital number at the bottom and top of the grayscale symbology reveals the range of brightness values within the band. You can see the band layers more easily if you collapse the symbology for each band. Notice that the image layer name is the name of the TIFF file, with the Landsat product identifier and the band number. We recommend the bands appear in descending order B1 through B11 in the contents, if they're not in this order, you can simply click and drag a layer above or below other layers, just as you can for vector layers. In the stacking order, the topmost file in the contents pane is visible, with all of the other layers drawn underneath it in the order they appear in the contents. You can turn bands on or off to view those that you want to see. Now let's turn off each band beginning with band 1, and notice as each band is revealed, it's slightly different. This is because each band contains data from a different region of the electromagnetic spectrum and serves a different purpose in analyses. Leave band 11 on. Notice the dark pixels surrounding the scene. These are not brightness values and are actually black because the cells have no data associated with them. Let's hide these black border areas. Go to the Raster Layer Appearance tab, Symbology, and select Stretch. Click on the Mask tab near the bottom and check Display Background Value to turn off those black pixels. Now those pixels are gone for band 11, but unfortunately that was only for band 11, and you'll have to repeat the process for all of the other bands. Leaving the Symbology window open, this goes quickly though. And once finished, close the Symbology window. This is much better. Now let's talk about tools we can use to compare two layers. Turn off all of the layers except bands 4 and 5. Be sure band 4, the top one, is selected and click on the Raster Layer Appearance tab. The two icons just to the left of the Symbology button are Layer Transparency and Swipe. Layer transparency allows you to change the transparency of the top layer so you can see through it. Move the slider bar or enter a percentage in the percentage box. In grayscale, it's difficult to see any difference between the images. Even changing the symbology does not help much. But this tool can be useful for other analyses. The Swipe tool works by revealing the underlying image as you drag the top image. Again, be sure Band 4 is selected, then click the Swipe button. Place your cursor on the Band 4 image and click and drag. You'll be revealing the Band 5 image below it. 
Swipe is an important tool that we'll use in the last chapter on accuracy assessments. Now that you have your images in ArcGIS Pro, we can add more to the discussion of metadata. Right-click on any layer name, go to Properties, and Source. The Source dialog box raster information provides the number of columns and rows for the image, that the image is one band, and the cell size XY are 30. This is another way to view basic metadata for a Landsat image besides Earth Explorer and viewing the metadata files we discussed in Chapter 12. Scroll down to Spatial Reference to see more detail. The scene's projection, unit of measurement, meters in this case, and many other details. Another source of information is in the Symbology. Right-click on the layer's name and go to Symbology. Additional information here includes the range of brightness values, the stretch type, and the percentages used to calculate the stretch. In this chapter, we demonstrated how to add the downloaded Landsat bands to ArcGIS Pro, display them, change their order in the contents, change symbology, and we reviewed areas of metadata. In Chapter 14, we'll demonstrate how to combine multiple bands into a single composite image.